move on to the second project, which involves architectural space, which is works, uh, buildings designed by Daniel Lieberskin. And uh, I, uh, this evolved out of a meeting I had with Daniel in New York in 2004, where we discussed the idea of me creating uh, a musical composition that would evolve specifically out of his architectural space. And as a result of that meeting, uh, a, a commission was set up between the Imperial War Museum North, just outside Manchester, in Salford Keys. I don't know if, how many of you know that, that uh, uh, building. It's extraordinary, extraordinary structure. And the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto. And the commission was also jointly funded by the London Sinfonietta. So I had at my disposal 24 musicians and also live electronics. I was very keen to actually use Daniel's very, very varied spaces. I mean, and, and in fact, the Imperial War Museum uh, in, in Salford and the Ontario Museum in Toronto are very, very different environments. And part of the, 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 the compositional problem was actually to create a piece that could be performed in many different kind of uh, spatial environments. There are certain aspects of his architecture which I found absolutely fascinating. One of them is this, this aspect of reflection. Uh, in, within a vast space, you'll see images actually reflected on either side. Uh, they're never quite connecting, but there is a sense of radiating out from certain specific images. And I was also, something to pick up on what Diana was talking about, sort of temporality of a spatial situation. I was very aware of trying to create a composition that had a, obviously a beginning, middle, and an end. So it had its own time frame. In this case, it's about 25 minutes. And to actually draw the listener into a combination of experiencing the architecture and also experiencing my superimposed uh, musical structure. And I think, I just want to talk about, about the process that I feel is very, the way that human beings actually perceive three-dimensional space. It's not an instant one, it's one that takes a period of time. And I think that's where the sort of temporality can, take, uh, can, t can play an important part. The, it's almost like you, if you go into a strange environment, a building, a, a cathedral, or whatever, you, you, it takes a, 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 t a time to assimilate the, the three-dimensional world. And it's like taking snapshots of various aspects within that space which gradually accumulate and unify into one overall impression of the, of the building. So compositionally, what I was very keen to do in this piece was to create an assimilated, assimilation of understanding about my, my musical structure. Uh, and the way I constructed this was out of a series of tiny fragments of music which began at one second in duration. And using the Fibonacci sequence, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, et cetera, gradually expand these musical images. And each time these musical images are pre presented, they are projected to different aspects of the space. And also to keep track on the, the, the process of exploration within that 25 minute duration, I decided to set up another process within that, which was a, a sequence of eight 12 note chords, which almost act as like harmonic pillars and unlike the, the first piece I played, you chant, which is a, a very linear composition, this piece really was based uh, fundamentally on activating and articulating a succession of quite complex 12-note chords. So that there's almost this ima imaginary kind of architectural uh, structure within my mind, um, these, these pillars of sound, which could be walked, uh, played through constantly, almost, and cycled through constantly. And what, the reason I used this process was to hopefully in, give the listener an awareness of repetition and storing this in their memory so that although the, 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 the chords are quite complex, the actual sequence, the way they are actually sequenced, is constantly reoccurring. So it keeps, keeps the, the, the listener's mind, hopefully, on a subliminal level, I don't know, but I think it, it's aware of some kind of cyclic process that is going on within this space.